Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and a very happy new year to you all. I just thought I'd put together a really quick video showing some of my favourite images from 2021. And when I think about my photography, I see myself as an astrophotographer, both deep sky astrophotography and landscape astrophotography. But I also do a little bit of wildlife photography as well. So I thought I would share some of my favourite images from each of those categories for you in this really short video. I hope you like the images. Okay, so I thought I'd start with my deep sky astro images because I'm sure that's what most of you are interested in. And one of the first that I wanted to share with you was this one of the Cygnus wall. So I've shot the North American Nebula before with my wide field telescope, but this one was with my Skywatcher 190 Maxitoff Newtonian. So big telescope, 1000 millimeter focal length, and I managed to zoom in just on the Cygnus wall. And I just love how it turned out. I love the detail that you see in the, the wall itself. Um, I love the colours that I was able to pull out and uh, just the, the almost the textures that you get from this image. So this was 7 hours 25 minutes um, of data across the HAS2 and the O3, the filters. So the next image I wanted to share was the, the Lion Nebula and I like this one I think because you don't see it as much so unlike some of the other images I've shot which you see quite a lot of everyone kind of shoots them the, the Lion Nebula seems to get overlooked a little bit um, and I think that's one of my goals for 2022 to try and shoot some of the lesser known targets um, and this is a really faint target um, but I was really pleased with how the uh, the image turned out and the, the detail that you can um, you can see in this image so you can definitely see sort of the tail and the, the head and the body of the lion which I was pleased with and I liked some of the colors as well and this was just under 10 hours of data with the 2600 mono and the ASCAR 400 millimeter the next one is the Seda region and the, the butterfly nebula within that um, and I think I would like this image because Anywhere you look, you can see detail, you can see um, different um, gases and different structures within the image. And I just just really like um, the fact that you can you can look anywhere and pick out something interesting. Um, I love the butterfly shape, so the dark nebula running through it to give the, the body of the butterfly and the wings either side. And I've processed this image a handful of times and I'm never really happy with the, the final colours, but this was what I kind of settled on. Um, this was 8 hours 45 minutes with the, the Ascar 400mm and the 2600 mono. And then this is the Tulip Nebula, um, and I wanted to share this image because the, I think the reason I like this image so much is because I had so much trouble capturing it. Um, I really struggled with the tracking, I really struggled with the mount, um, and I threw away so much data trying to capture this image, so I was really pleased when I was actually able to pull together a final image. This one's just over six hours, I think it's about six and a half hours worth of data, so not a huge amount of data, um, but I probably threw away nearly 20, 25 hours. Um, so I was just really pleased that, that I was able to put together a final image. Um, and I think that this is one of those targets which really, um, the name really applies and really uh, jumps out at you. So as soon as you see this, this nebula, you instantly think of a flower, you instantly think of a tulip. Um, and that's not always the case, but, but this one definitely is. But by far my favourite image of the year has to be the Crescent Nebula that was shot with Joe and Glenn. Um, so Joe, Glenn and myself um, did a collaboration and we, we collected nearly 40 hours or maybe just over 40 hours worth of data um, from, from all of our different locations on this target and then spent about two, two and a half hours together on Zoom editing the, uh, the final image and I was really delighted with how it turned out and we, we submitted it for, for an APOD and we were delighted they actually won an APOD so this is in the, the NASA archive so yeah absolutely thrilled with with the outcome of this image thrilled with the detail um that you can see especially in that o3 around the outside and i think that that's a tribute to especially to the expertise of Je glenn and joe um with the with the editing um there but yeah delighted with this image uh, probably my favorite image of of all time 
Okay, so moving on to some landscape astrophotography. Um, I didn't get out as much as I'd hoped this year, and that was purely down to the weather. Um, so any time there was uh, no moon, there seemed to be cloud. Um, but yeah, I got out on a couple of trips, and this was one that I took to the Malvern Hills. So I haven't explored it really, but um, went up there with a couple of mates and managed to get a couple of images. So this one, just the pathway leading into leading into the image with the Milky Way over the top, um, I really liked. And this was with the Sony a7 III and the Sony 14mm f1.8 lens. Um, most of my astro images I take multiple exposures for the sky um, and then a longer 2-3-4 minute exposure for the foreground and blend them in post-processing. Um, same technique for this image, this was just up the road, so this is just about 15 minutes from my home, um, just outside Borton on the water, um, and I just really like uh, like this image, there's a bit more light pollution on the horizon than I'd hoped, but I just like the, the rolling Cotswold hills that you see here with the, the Milky Way over the top. Um, this was with the Sony a7 III and the Zeiss 25mm lens. Um, this one's actually from a old hill fort in Yulee called U well, Yulee Hill Fort, um, so in Gloucestershire. Um, but I really like this image, just the pathway and that tree and the, the daisies either side um, with the Milky Way at the top, which I thought was really nice. Um, this is kind of the other side of, uh, or in the other direction from my house, so the light pollution you see here is coming from Bristol. So more light pollution than I'd hoped again, but... Um, yeah, I couldn't get to many really dark locations this year, but yeah, I was still pretty happy with how this, this image turned out. And then this was um, on the same night as the other Cotswold image that I showed you. Um, I just saw this style from the road when I was driving around looking for locations during the day, um, and I thought it might make quite an interesting foreground image. So an old abandoned style that haven't, hasn't been used for, for many years, or doesn't look like it's been used for many years. Um, got the wide angle lens out and managed to, to line it up with the Milky Way, and I think it came out pretty nice. Um, Again, this is a Sony a7 III with the, uh, the 14 millimeter lens. My um, favorite astro image of the year though was this one that I managed to capture of this abandoned barn. Um, I just think the structure of the barn looks really cool, um, silhouetted with the Milky Way in the background. And again, this was just something I stumbled on. I was out in the car driving around looking for locations and managed to, to see this barn. So I thought I'd go back and see if I could line it up and it, it turned out pretty well. Um, this is light pollution from Cheltenham. So this is more towards the Cheltenham side. So um, not ideal with the, the light pollution pollution this year in my um, landscape images um, but this was pretty much the best I could do from from that location. Um, I'm hoping to get out more um, next year maybe take my star tracker with me and maybe travel to some more dark locations but uh, but this was my favorite landscape astro image of the year. Um, and then I had one more astro image that I didn't really know which category to put into. Um, I didn't think it fit into the deep sky images, but that was this one of the ISS transiting the moon. So I'd never done this before. I'd never even tried to photograph the ISS before, but I got a call from a mate asking if I wanted to go out and give it a go. Um, and we lined it up perfectly um, and waited and we got there and it was a bit of a nerve wracking um, 10, 15 minute wait. But then we saw the ISS and we were delighted when it went straight across the moon and um, multiple shutters uh, to capture the ISS with a fast shutter speed and then I blended them all in Photoshop to get that appearance of uh, the ISS travelling across in front of the moon and I was just yeah pretty pleased with how this one turned out. Okay, so moving on to some wildlife images, and I'm, I know that not all of you are that interested in the wildlife images, so I'll be quite quick. Um, but I took a trip to Skomer Island in June this year um, and managed to get a handful of, uh, of images that I was really happy with. But this was the one that I chose as my favourite image from the trip. So this is the puffin coming in with all of the, the sand eels um, in the mouth or on the beak. Um, and I just like the fact that you've got the darker cliffs in the background, which really um, help make the the puffin pop um, well I think it'll make the hell makes the puffin pop anyway um, and I was really yeah really happy with this this image um, all of these images or this image was taken with the Sony a7 III and the 100 to 400 millimeter lens 
This is a, uh, another image I was really pleased with. So I was actually in a field waiting to try and photograph some buzzards um, and I had no luck with the buzzards, but just as I was about to leave, this uh, red kite came and dived to try to catch something, missed it, um, but I managed to get it on the way back out. And I just like the really clean background um, that you, you see here. Um, and I like the, the framing of, um, of the bird as well. I think it makes for quite an interesting image. Um, this is a local barn owl, so this barn owl lives just down the road in the Cotswold Water Park um, and I've seen this barn owl hunt on many occasions and numerous times it was too far away to photograph but this time it came really close um, and I was lucky it was just hit by the sun but just behind it the the um, hedgerow was in shadow so I think that it made it for a really nice background and really made that barn owl pop off the, off the screen. And again, this was on the same evening, so you can really see how the, the different backgrounds change the image. So same bar now, same e evening, about 10 minutes apart, but this was with um, the the background illuminated by the light but the the bar now flew right in front of me, looked right at me with the wing up and I just thought it made for quite a cool image. But my favourite um, wildlife image that I took in 2021 was this one of this little owl. So I was um, waiting, watching this owl most of the day and eventually it did fly right in front of me um, and I managed to, to capture this this shot. Um, just really pleased with the, the colours, the tones um, and the detail that you get from, from this little owl. They are such fantastic um, creatures and uh, yeah, great fun to watch, great fun to photograph. Um, and I was really happy with with how this image turned out. So anyway, I hope you hope you like some of those images. So I hope you like those images. I will try and put the links to each of the videos um, down below. So if you want more information about any of those individual images, please check out those links. But I also just wanted to say a massive thank you to all the support throughout the year. Thanks to anyone who's watched any of my videos and all the comments and the likes. I do really appreciate it. I can't believe I've got over 1700 uh, subscribers to my channel. It really, uh, really blows my mind. But I do really appreciate um, all of your support and everyone who takes the time to, to watch my videos. So thank you very much for watching and hopefully let's have a few clearer skies in 2022. Cheers.